one of the worst gun violence disasters in recent U.S. memory. The 2012 Sandy Hook Elementary School shooting in Newtown, Connecticut left 26 people dead, most of them small children. At the time, lawmakers proposed gun reform legislation that would expand background checks, a move supported by the president and nearly 90 percent of the public. To reduce the broader epidemic of gun violence in this country. But it failed in the Senate, and two years later, gun violence is steadily on the rise. Analysts say it will soon surpass car crashes as leading killer of people under age 25 in the United States. So how easy is it to buy a gun in the United States? It depends on where you live. Currently, federal law requires registered gun dealers to check the criminal history of every buyer. Uh, when you buy online or at a retail location, you're required to do a background check to ensure that you're not a felon uh, or otherwise prohibited from owning a firearm. But states can go further if voters approve it. In Virginia, it's a very simple process. As a private citizen, uh, uh, commerce between citizens isn't as heavily regulated inside the states, and so in Virginia, those citizens are allowed to do private sales without background checks. Active in 32 states, person-to-person -person gun sales with no background check requirements are often referred to as the gun show loophole. Individual private citizens are allowed once or twice a year to, to uh, get a table at a gun show and sell their personally owned firearms to other private citizens without the requirement of a background check. Um, Again, it's the same thing that happens if I were to put my firearm up on arms list or Virginia gun trader and offer it for sale. Failure to act in Congress has motivated some gun control advocates to take action at the state level. In Washington state, voters recently approved universal background checks, historic legislation in a country where the right to bear arms is laid out in the Constitution. I do not think that everybody needs a gun or should own a gun, just like I don't think everybody should be able to have a driver's license and drive. Tina Wilson-Cohen is a former Secret Service agent turned private firearms instructor who's studying clinical psychology. She says at the center of this is the National Rifle Association and its lobbying arm, the Institute for Legislative Action. A former trainer with the organization, it wasn't until she spoke out publicly in support of expanding background checks that she says she began to be intimidated and bullied. When I started speaking out about their policies or disagreeing with them, that's when I started having problems with um, basically them telling me that if I didn't drink from the same fountain, that they would yank my credentials. You've seen their ads. You've heard their propaganda. In 2014 alone, the NRA spent $2.5 million in lobbying and around $28 million in federal campaign spending. Four months after the Sandy Hook school shooting, a proposal to ban some semi-automatic weapons was also defeated in Congress. Meanwhile, the NRA warned its members that gun reform meant the government was no longer there to protect them. That when you're on your own, the surest way to stop a bad guy with a gun is a good guy with a gun. The public civilians, they do not have that need for an automatic weapon. That is their ideology. If I want to sell my gun, I sell my gun. If I want to buy one, I should be able to buy one. And they will not back down from that. No matter how you interpret the Second Amendment, it's still illegal for criminals to buy firearms in the United States. It's up to the laws and the people who write them to determine when sellers should look into a buyer's background. Unfortunately, I hate to say this, but it's going to take a lot more deaths, more headlines in the newspaper, and it's going to take a lot more Americans to jump on the bandwagon and basically get the message and get the idea that whatever we're doing now is not working. As the number of high-profile school shootings and violent attacks opens a debate about gun safety in the United States, the question is, how long will money speak louder than bullets?